Hi, this is episode 33 of Krondos. I'm your host, Jordan Hudgens. I'm a Ruby dev and the CTO of the DevCamp platform. It's the middle of the week, and on Wednesdays, I like to cover a random development topic to help you on your coding journey. And today, I'm gonna discuss the concept of cramming versus consistent study. And don't change the channel if you're not in school. If you're a developer or if you want to learn software development, the learning never ends. On average, I'm typically going through over a dozen books at the same time and around four to five various online courses because the deeper I get into development, the more I realize how much more I really need to understand. With that in mind, I think the topic of cramming versus consistent study habits should be beneficial since the way that we study is just as important as the volume of how much we study. Most of us have been in a situation where we put off studying for too long and before we know it, an exam is upon us and then we have to cram for it. If you can remember back to the last time that you crammed for an exam or project, how much of what you studied can you still remember today? If you're like me, probably not much. While I was in college, I was very bad at this and ended up cramming for many of my midterms and finals with mixed results from a great perspective. However, once I got into computer science grad school at Texas Tech, I ran into a problem. Cramming did not work at all. Software development topics build upon themselves, so what was taught in the fall semester would be the foundation for even more complex topics that would be discussed in the spring. In the fall, I'd learn about logic programming, and in the spring, I'd have a course where I had to build a production application using the Prolog programming language. Using cramming as a study technique resulted in me having very poor retention of what I was learning, which meant I had to go back and relearn the topics I'd already forgotten from the previous semester. I don't have to tell you how stressful this made my academic life, not to mention the fact I was working as a full-time developer at the same time. So I knew that something had to change and I put together a system for helping me retain what I learned each day through a consistent study pattern. Much like a function in programming, my system for consistent studying takes in a few parameters. One is scheduling and two is fighting procrastination. For scheduling, I created a to-do list segmented by day for what I needed to study. This included academic papers, books, watching online lectures, anything like that. I put these in a drag and drop to-do list on Basecamp. After I studied a particular item, I'd drag it to the next day's to-do list, and so I'd have a visual cue that I was done for it for that day. For me, I would procrastinate studying because staring at the list of books I had to read was intimidating, and this was mainly due to the fact that I didn't set any practical goals for studying. If you stare at a discrete mathematics textbook and tell yourself just to study, it's natural to want to just put it off. However, if you set small goals, you're less likely to put them off. With that in mind, I'll put in a note such as read three pages of my information retrieval textbook. And three pages doesn't sound nearly as scary as the vague just study mindset. The interesting result in making small manageable goals for studying is that not only does it help curb procrastination, but typically I'll also read much more than the three pages once I've actually started. There have been plenty of times where I've set a goal of a few pages of a book and ended up reading a few chapters. With all of this being said, there are times where I plan deep work study sessions. In one of these sessions, I'll set aside two to three hours to sit down without any distractions and work through a complex topic. However, I always limit the time to no more than two to three hours per day, and I'll usually not study any other topics these days because I'm usually mentally drained by the end of them. I already have a post planned where I'll go into detail on how I structure a deep work session, so stay tuned for that in the next few weeks. I hope that this guide has been helpful and will help you develop your own system for studying consistently so you can retain what you learn and be able to use it when it matters most.